All right, this is the project we're going to be doing on this video. Um, it was a pretty quick, um, fast project. Very fun. Lots of blingy bling on it, just like I like. All right, let's get started. Okay, to get started on our snow buddies uh, design here, I've got my snowflake and um, my wooden snowflake here. It's from Bear With This. I, I put a coat of uh, multi purpose sealer on it and a coat of um, winter blue. I'm going to lightly sand it. You can do the same thing with a brown paper bag. You just want to remove any of the grain that is raised up. Give it a smooth surface. Wipe it off. I find it much easier on these laser cut pieces to apply it with a foam roller. So if you have a foam roller, um, I recommend you using it. Um, I got my foam roller with this container here at um, Lowe's for like three bucks. They still sell them, although now the rollers have a plastic handle, but they do sell the ones like this separate. Okay, so <clears throat> I've got uh, winter blue on my um, roller here. I'm going to put a little bit more out. I'm going to try and pick up four colors here on my roller. It doesn't want to squeeze out now. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to pick up some winter blue on the very kind of like end of the roller. Try and work that in the best I can here. I'm just on a paper plate here. I'm going to go beside that and get some uh, what color is this? Williamsburg blue. Work that in. So you can clearly see I have two colors there. I'm going to go beside that and pick up some wedge, no, colonial blue. And then our last color is wedgewood blue. And I just want to kind of work all those into my roller here. And just start on the end where two of them are and, and work your way up. So we want to keep our dark colors down here with my squeaky roller and we're just going to work out I'm giving more pressure on the dark side of my roller right now but as I work my way up I'm going to start applying more pressure in the middle and then more pressure on the very end as I get to the top so I can kind of build a nice gradation of color going from light to dark and I may apply that dark a little bit more of that dark on there I'd like it to be a little bit darker down here maybe coming up a little bit more onto this snowflake and that's a squeaky roller a little bit better and then up here I'm just gonna again give light pressure pushing more on the top edge of the roller I think I will also go in here and add maybe just a tiny bit of white if I can we'll see how that will work out I don't want a lot of it so I'm really gonna work it into the end of that I think I'll wipe some of it off and we'll put a little bit of the white out here. Now you could just do the center. You could tape off and just do the center and do something really pretty out here on the outer edges. Work that in a little bit. Okay, so 
when we get done there we've got going from light all the way down to dark I still feel like this could be a little bit darker down here so I think I will quickly do that while it's wet a little bit more if I can you don't want it to start drying because then you'll start lifting paint so can go like that with it or we can go two at the top two straight out and two at the bottom it's really a personal preference on how you want to lay your pattern on there I will probably hmm I think I made it to go like this but it wouldn't normally hang hang up like that it would hang more probably like this so I'm gonna have to adjust my my paint here a little bit Make this a little bit lighter through here. And I'll dark down here. Very easy to adjust with a roller. Even a squeaky one. So I want all my light to be... I want the top to be up here, so... lay it down like I want to paint it and definitely get a little bit lighter through there. I want the darker to be down lower. Get that a little lighter out there. Just pressing down harder on the light side of my roller up there and then a little bit harder with the dark side down here there we go I think that looks pretty good okay we're gonna let this get completely dry and then we are going to uh, go ahead and put our pattern on here okay we've got all of our base uh, coats on here um, let me zoom in just a little bit. We're going to start working on this little guy here um, I also wanted to mention on the background here if you didn't want to use the uh, assortment of colors that I use down here you can just pick like the dark color and add white to it and get your values as as it goes lighter up the thing up it <laughs> so that you know if you don't want to have as many paints on hand you don't have to um, and that's just a way to to go from a darker to a lighter value all the way to the top so um, just a little extra information there for you to have Get my misting bottle here. I always spritz water on my palette on the side. I like to just spritz water so I have clean water to use. Um, we're going to work on the hat. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of lamp black with some water in my brush and just work it into one side of the brush and get it just on the one edge. So we're just we're just working it in. I have water on this side. Actually, I have water on the whole brush, but if I need extra water, I'm going to go pick it up here. So I'm just kind of working it in that edge of the brush right there. Working it with the water so that it softens. I'm going to go over here and pick up a teeny tiny little dot of water and continue to work that in. I've got paint maybe a little bit too far over for this huge hat here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the highlight side, the side of the hat. So, whoop, get my paint going the right way. So we're going to put some dark up here on this upper edge. And I do have my paint over a little far, so I'm going to wash that out and reload it. I want to keep it more on that corner of the brush, because this is a small design here, and I don't want... I don't want it to take over. We'll come down this edge here. And around this edge. Wipe some of the water out of my brush here. And 
I'm going to go underneath this lip here just a little, a little bit. I hope I keep you on camera. Sometimes with the smaller designs I have a tendency to get you so close I get you right off camera. Okay, so that is our shading side. Now I want to lighten that, so let me put some white out. And I'm just going to wipe the excess paint off of my brush and go ahead and load it on that side that I had the black on. And it will make kind of a light gray. It should make a pretty light gray. It shouldn't be very dark because I didn't have much paint left on my brush. Okay, touch my brush to my paper towel. Get any buildup on the tip off. And then we'll lighten on this edge. And here. And on the top up here. Smooth that out with my water edge of my brush here. And I'll come back and intensify that with just some plain white. So wash my brush out and load it with just white. And I'm going to touch up this shading right here. I think it needs to have just a little bit more. Actually, I'm just going to go down the whole thing. Just darken that just a little bit. I think I might bring the white, though, along the um, front edge of the hat. Soften it out. Okay. I think that's pretty good. So for the hat band, we're going to just add a little bit of black to our red. So we're just going to make a little bit darker shade of that red. Since this is such a small piece, I don't, I don't feel the need to get out a whole bunch of different colors, but you could get out like a cranberry wine if you wanted. So we're going to keep the shading on this edge. And then we'll use some white on the other edge. So when you're doing your white on your hat, you could just come all the way up. Now if you want it to look a little bit more like a silky ribbon, I'm going to wipe a lot of that white off and then we can go right in the middle and do a little back to back float here and give it a little bit of silky look. But we don't necessarily have to do that because we're going to add some holly on here. So let me just draw some on real quick. Just put some little holly leaves on here. Maybe draw them a little bit better than I'm drawing them. And we're just going to put those on with some leaf green. And then dot a few berries with our red. Um, not a ton of detail is going to be needed here. <clears throat> so we're going to be using leaf green for our holly leaves. One of my favorite greens is leaf green. I just love it. So get a small round brush. Number one round, so I'm going to use 
Oh, I don't know. The number's kind of worn off on this one. Could be a two. Something small enough that you can paint these little leaves in with. Not make them ginormous. We won't have a whole lot of detail on these, so... couple of coats on there. I'm going to wipe off my brush and go get a little bit of white and blend it in with that green. Zoom in just a tiny bit more for these because they're kind of tiny. And I'm just going to highlight them a little bit on one side. Okay, maybe add a little bit of black to the green. And you can kind of add a little bit of shading back here. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of that leaf green back in there because I feel like my highlight got kind of carried away there. And then while it's wet, you can just kind of blend it all together. And hopefully it still looks like a holly leaf. This one here kind of has lost its shape, so I'm going to see if I can shape it back up without making it the biggest holly leaf ever on this little bitty hat. Okay, then our red. We're just going to take our red, the tip of a small round or a detail liner, and just put some dots in here. And that's it for our holly. So don't get too... Um, technical with that just the look of holly okay let's work on our snowman here and we are going to shade him now I'm just using a flat brush to do my shading you can use whatever brush you like to use is the one that I recommend <laughs> so um, don't feel like you're stuck in what brushes I use these are my recommendations only and I would never tell you that a brush that you use is not going to work because you use a brush different than anybody else because you are your, unique to your own painting style. So if you've developed a technique with a certain brush, then you just use that brush. So we are going to side load with, um, what are we using here, Williamsburg Blue. I'm going to see if this is going to be dark enough. I might want to go to that little bit darker blue. Because we base coated our snowman in with Winter Blue. So we want to keep all of our shading on this side. I'll come back and do underneath the hat when that dries. And we'll go underneath the scarf here. On this edge. And then we're going to flip over our brush and bring it down here to create his kind of waste, I guess. And we're going to go along this edge out here. Pick up a little bit more paint. A little bit more water. I need to move my paint a little bit better can't do it if I don't have both on my brush. Lay your brush flat. Soft pressure when you can. I'm going to mop that. It's got a little messy for me. I might have to go to a bigger, bigger brush on the bottom part of the snowman here. You know, the, the bigger the brush you can use, the better I think it just works best. All right. Let's go around our... I need to really let this dry because I need to bring it down and over a little bit more, but I really need it to dry. hat. 
So we're basically doing all of, oh, you weren't even on camera for that. Under the hat, I just went. <laughs> all of the left sides. Let me wide angle back out just a little bit so we can keep this guy in camera shot. I'm going to go to a little bit bigger brush to work over here. My float came out a little far right there. I don't like that. So let me go to, I would go to a 12 or a 10, either one. Depending on how big you've made your design will determine what size brush you use. But bigger, I feel, is always so much better. Okay, I'm going to mop that very gently, very, very, very gently. Because mopping will remove your paint and I'm just wanting to soften. Be sure it's dry before you go back over it because if you don't you'll just remove so I want to put a little, little bit more in there just a little bit that might have been just a touch too much okay I'm gonna kind of clean up his shape here a little bit don't really like that shape there I'm not sure I can since our background is a variety of colors. And my paints want to seem to be shaking up well. There we go, much better. sure that improved it but okay let's give him some highlight on the opposite side with some white and so I'm gonna kind of pity pat this or I'm gonna go along the edge get a nice clean edge there and then I'm just going to kind of pity pat it, walk it out, give him some little bit of texture in this snowman. Pity pat, pity pat. And then on his face. Stay from underneath the I want him to be a white snowman, not a, not a um, blue one. So we need to let that dry and then we're going to repeat it. Okay, I've repeated the shading just a little bit over here, but the white I definitely want to perk up, so we're going to repeat that. We've got it good and dry, our first coat. So I'm going to add a second coat on here. And pity pat, pity pat, pity pat, pity pat, pity pat. A little bit of texture on our snowman. You can keep it all smooth if you don't like the pity pat part. So it's your snowman. I just want you to be happy with how he looks. So be creative. Take those creative reins. Side. I'm going to put just a little bit in here. Okay, we need to get that dry before we can start adding any details in here. Okay, let's add some features onto our little snow guy here. We are going to paint his carrot nose in. And let me look at my line drawing here so I can kind of see where I put it because I'm not going to put my... I would want you to transfer your, your pattern on if you need to. Or just create your own snowman face that you like. 
So we'll just give him a little carrot nose here. And I might have to apply two coats of that. That was with Tangelo Orange. So while that's drying, let's add his eyes and mouth in. So his mouth is just going to be dots. I want them to get smaller as they go up so we won't see all of them going up on that side and then his eyes are just going to be little circles as well try and make them the same size I'm going to wipe my brush off now I would go to a detail liner probably to do this give him some new eyebrows if you want he cannot have eyebrows it's up to you and then I'm going to get a little bit of white on the tip of this brush and dot the eye and you can if you want to you don't have to because these dots on the mouth are so small you can put a little little dot of white down there on the, on the centers of the mouth okay I think our tangelo orange is dry so let's put another coat of that on here okay and while it is wet I'm going to pick up the burnt orange on my brush and we're just going to tap this on the bottom a little bit more and let it kind of blend with that tangelo orange while it's wet so we don't have to try and shade such a small item and then we'll wipe the paint off and pick up some white and try to do this while your orange is still wet and we'll just put a little bit of white along the top here and we can darken up along the bottom there of the nose you can add a little bit of black to that burnt orange if you need to or want to and I'm going to tap just a little bit might be too dark Just kind of pity pat tap it there. And you can come back and add more detail to, to the nose by adding lines and stuff, but he's so small I don't think he really needs it. So let's get a small little scruffy brush and a dry paper towel. And we're going to pick up some country red on our dry little scruffy brush. And we're going to remove the paint onto a dry paper towel leaving just a little bit of that paint left in the brush, very little. And now with very, very gentle pressure and a circular motion, let's just add a little bit of pink to his cheeks. And make him a happy guy. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, let's work on his scarf. Now his scarf, I want to make it look like it's kind of folded through here. So there would be a line. Let me see if I have a watercolor pencil. This is a watercolor pencil. So we're going to put a line, pretend like there's a line across there like that. And then this one comes down here. Actually, this goes this way and this way. remove that so it would go kind of like that so we're just going to add some red um, lines on here with our country red so just kind of I'm just using a one round kind of curve them to make it look like the fabric is folded here might be a little bit straighter here. And then we can start curving. Okay. Then on the, um, well, let's just do this one here because this one will be a little bit easier. We're just going to kind of curve them this way with the fabric. And with 
with this one we've got kind of a wrinkle coming down the center here. So we want to I need a little bit of water in my paint here. I want it to flow nicely off my brush. So we're going to just create some fold in this one coming down. And then down here they can get more straight because the fold is more pronounced up there. Okay, so there is our initial stripes on our snowman. We want to make sure our stripes are dry. Now I want you, if your paint is too thin, I want you to repeat that, but country red's pretty opaque color. So you should be pretty good with just one coat of that. I want you to mix a teeny tiny, well maybe not. Let's go with some blue. Mix a tiny little bit of our Wedgwood blue in with our red. It's going to darken that red but not turn it into a black color. And we're going to use this for our shading color. So we want to shade along here. Okay, separate. We'll do this side. Okay, we want to separate our scarf underneath here. Go along this edge here. This edge here. Kind of brings that one up on top a little bit more. We'll go along our outer edges out here, give it some roundness. Actually, that edge we could highlight. Let's put a little bit up here on this edge. And then we're going to come down the outer edges. Right here. And let's do this little fold. I think I lost it there. A little fold right there. Tiny, tiny little bit, maybe along the bottom edge down there. All right, we're going to highlight with some white. So you can do this with a, a round brush or with a flat brush or whatever brush you're shading with. Just a little bit of white on our brush here. We might have to come back and repeat this. Just a little bit. I want that to be a little bit brighter out there. Okay, that looks pretty good for our scarf. Pretty good. I think I might darken right in here and right in here. So let me do that real quick. I'm going to add a little bit more blue into it this time. Just to get it a little bit darker really make that look like it's folded there. Up on the toe of the brush a little bit because that's a pretty tight area. This needs to be a little bit darker. And then a little bit out here on our outer edges. Okay, I might come back after it completely dries. I'll check that highlight and brighten up the highlight a little bit, probably with just a, a small round brush or a liner. Okay, before I forget here, we want to add some buttons on this guy. Some black. We're going to give him four buttons, I think. And then you can just put a little dot of white for a highlight. I might have to get the black out of my brush for that. I 
Okay, let's add some little tassels on our scarf here. I'm going to add some light buttermilk first. This was what we based our scarf in originally. I'm just using a 10-0 liner. My paint is thinned a little bit with water so it will flow off of my brush nicely. And then we'll add some red on here. Wash the, the light buttermilk out. We'll go into our country red. And we'll put some of these in there. And then we'll add just a few white ones on top. scarf's all done. I'm not going to do his arms yet because I want to get the broom finished. So for our broom, <clears throat> we're going to streak in some burnt umber on it. Just kind of pull it down. A little bit of water. Mix a little bit of water with your paint. I'm just using a small round brush now. some up this way. Okay, then let's add a little bit of antique gold in there. I think we'll come back with our golden straw and mix a little bit of white with it. Wipe the antique gold off your brush and pick up a little bit of the golden straw and some white. Now you could also base your um, broom in with moon yellow if you had that instead. Give it a little bit of highlight on here. And then across the middle here, we're going to kind of tie it up and we'll do some shading on it. We're going to tie it up with some burnt umber. gold. Yeah, I might go into that mix of golden straw and white. So we've got it tied up, so let's shade on it now. And we're going to shade with some burnt umber. Burnt umber is kind of a more transparent brown, so really work it into your brush. We're going to go down here along the bottom. And we'll go above and below our... I have just a tiny little bit of paint on my brush. repeat down here in a second, but I want to go along the top edge with just a tiny bit of white. Just kind of be a little bit irregular with it. Kind of gives your broom the look of, it's got a lot of bristles if you're irregular with it. Alright, let me go back down here. I really want to darken this. with our burnt umber. Put just a little bit out here.
Okay, let's go down on our handle now. Okay, on our handle, let's streak some burnt umber down it by just taking our round brush or liner brush and doing that. I'm going to clean my brush off here and get some of the golden straw. And we'll do that down it as well. I might have to go to a liner brush here to get a little bit more detailed line. Let's see if I can do it with a small round. I'm going to add a little bit of white to that, I think. So I can get it to show up a little bit better. Put a little bit of burnt umber back in there. I feel like I lost some of it. Ooh, we're a lot of burnt umber. Okay. And a little bit of the highlight back in there. I want to see my burnt umber. A little bit underneath all that. Oops. Okay, let's shade at the base of it where it connects to the bristle parts of the broom. Some burnt umber. And we'll do a little bit down here at the bottom. If you want to give it a little bit more of a rounded look, you can go down the edge, but this is a pretty tedious little thing to do here so that's an only if you want to kind of option thing just to give the handle a little bit more of a rounded look now I'm just going to streak a little bit of white down the center shading of burnt umber up here. Okay, hopefully you're on camera for all that. Okay, now I'm going to go and transfer my arms and my bird that sits on the broom here. Okay, let's paint our little bird in here with some country red. I just kind of roughly drew mine in here, so we're going to try and make it look like a cardinal. And then our arms we're going to put in with some cocoa. make his arms super super skinny. I mean I want him to be thin but not super duper crazy skinny. So I'm going to fatten him up a little bit. Fingers will stay more skinny. And then this arm is coming from over here. To the broom. And then his fingers are going to wrap around the broom. bird here. And let me put a little beak on him with some black. It's a cardinal, so I'm gonna first off. I'm gonna kind of point his, give him some feathers coming off the top of his head. Get the water out of my brush here. 
So they have little spiky hair things, feathers or whatever that come off of the top of their head. Not this way. So we want to give that look. Got his beak kind of big there. Let's see if I can erase it. Maybe make it just a touch smaller. Just using my white eraser. It's damp. You can't do it dry. You got to do it damp so we can kind of work the water into the paint there. Okay, I'm just going to pull some of this black out on his red around him. Dot for an eye here. For a big dot for an eye. <laughs> Get my liner brush out. A little bit of white. We got some ginormous bird beak. Here. I really, really, really want that to be small. This is how you fix your mistakes. A little bit of black still on there. be very gentle when you're erasing. You can erase all the way down to your your wood and you don't want to do that. So <clears throat> I'm going to try painting it in with a liner brush this time. Maybe if I had drawn a beak on here it wouldn't be so difficult. Alright, let's take it up past where we put the eye there. Oop. There we go. Sometimes these little things can be the most difficult. some feathers. A little bit more of the red and a tiny little bit of white. I'll kind of brighten the chest there. Stroke a little bit on the head, or tap a little bit on the head, a little bit back here. Well, it's a pretty ugly cardinal, I have to say. Okay, let's finish up the arms. Let me erase the graphite line here. trying to fix the top of that bird's head. Not sure I did. 
very good job of it. stronger glasses on it might be helpful for some of this smaller stuff I don't think that's helping the beak out any so we'll just oh, we'll just leave it all black all right kind of get the idea there Alright, so for the arms, we're going to streak in some burnt umber. And you can kind of give it a little bit of, you know, movement to make it look more like tree limbs if you want. As you streak it down. Arm. Okay, let's do a little bit of cocoa with some light buttermilk or white mix, whichever you have on your palette that you want to use. Just create a light cocoa color for a highlight, for our first highlight here. You're, you're going in such a small area, this should be a fairly quick little thing to do here. And then we'll go with just white. And then we'll do some shading here with some burnt umber. So right here, I want to add a little bit. And I kind of want to separate the fingers just a little bit. So we can put a little bit there. I'm going to go along the inside of the arm here be up on the very tippy toe of your brush so you can keep that a narrow tight little float in there and then for our other arm I'm going to put some back here where it goes into the body and a little bit on our fingers and then we'll come down this bottom edge here I think I'm going to highlight those fingers a little bit more so they show up better because I can't really shade around them say if you can do a much better bird than that you go for it because that bird is sad 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 can't tell which way it's facing to be honest with you <laughs> I mean which way I'm sure that didn't help it much. I'm just not happy with his shape, so let me try and add a little bit of highlighting on him. My paint's a little wet there.
Uh, you're turning him to a pink bird. Pink, 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 pink. Red, 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 red. Red's what we want. Okay, he's got some fat tail feathers. He's just a big bird. <laughs> he's just, oh my gosh. I don't know what happened to the shape of this bird, but it is what it is. A mess and a half. So, do your bird much better than I did my bird. Okay, so now we want to lay in a little bit of snow under him. Okay, I've added some lines on here where I want to kind of create a snow. And I'm just going to float along that line with some snow white. Kind of give it a little wiggle. Bring it into our snowman there. Let it soften out and can bring it down just a little bit. snowman here from that one and this one will kind of come into the snowman and soften out and then we'll, have, we'll put one down here okay that's really all we need to do for the snow you can come back and brighten it if you want to but it's just a, a float of just Snow White on there. Except for this one, I might bring up just a tad bit higher. setting down in the snow. We don't want to go past our thing here. So, let me erase that just a little bit across here. Make sure it's not on that one. Okay, I'm going to wide angle out so you can see it. Okay, I think I want to spatter this with some snow. So I want to cover up these points because I'm going to do something different to these points. I don't want the snow to be out here. So I just cut me some scrap paper. I'm going to cover up my points. I'm going to have a damp brush ready because I don't want snow to be on top of my snowman's face or possibly on the bird. So now you just want to take a... Uh, whatever you like to spatter with. I like to spatter with a rake brush. I have this long filbert rake brush. It's got very long bristles on the end of it, which you can't hardly see. They come out of the end of it. Okay. But whatever you like to spatter with, if you like to just use a flat brush and go like this, or a toothbrush, an old toothbrush, whatever you like to spatter with, that's what I want you to do. I'm going to thin a little bit of paint, white paint, with some water. And then I'm just going to tap some on here. Alright, where's my damp brush? Oh, it's in my hand. <laughs> I'm going to remove from the face and maybe a little bit off of the bird. And you can just spatter as much as you want. Your snowflakes can be as big as you want. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Pretty good for our spattering. 
All right, so let's take these off and see how that looks. That looks pretty good. I like how that looks. Let me clean my brush out here. And then we're going to mark off for our, um, ed for our points here. Okay, I want to do something different to the outside border here, the, the tips of the snowflake. So um, you can leave it like this or you can spatter the whole thing, but I, I kind of want to glitz it up a little bit. I love my bling. So I'm going to take my ruler and mark off where my points are here. We want a straight line across these points. This is going to tell us where we need to apply our varnish to. This is definitely an optional step. You do not have to do it this way, but um, I think it's going to add <coughs> excuse me, a little bit of pizzazz to our piece here. So I'm coming back away. I don't know if you can see. Let me zoom you in. I've got a little tiny bit of each edge of this showing. Just a tiny bit. Because when I draw my line, my pencil's going to push me up to where that those two points come together. One more here. Okay, so we've got our points drawn in here. Okay, so for the next part of our thing here, we are going to apply some glitter to the outside. Now you could use just Glamour Dust paint, which I love this Glamour Dust paint. It's awesome, but I want a little bit more dimension on this piece. So we're going to apply some varnish on here and you'll want to have a paper plate or a, some kind of tray that you can dump your glitter in when you're done so I'm going to this is just a um, like a clear iridescent glitter you can buy packages of different colors of glitter at Hobby Lobby. This came from Hobby Lobby. Use your 40% off coupon to get a good bargain here. So there's gold, silver, and black. Then we have a white glitter, a silver glitter, and an iridescent glitter. And this one is... I'm not really sure what this one is. If it, if it came in a set like this or if it was a individual bottle that I bought. But it's a little bit more iridescent can use whatever you want or not do this step at all. So I want to move fairly quickly because I want to work while the varnish is wet. I'm going to paint onto here with our varnish. Hold it up in the light so you can really see your surface good. Make sure you get good coat of varnish on here. We're going to do this to each point. Right along that line, you can put a piece of scotch tape on there if you want to. Okay, now we're going to come over here to my little glitter tray and I'm going to sprinkle the glitter on here. And like I said, you can, you can brush on the glamour dust if that's what you have on hand. I use glamour dust all the time. I love it. It's, my, it's one of my very favorite deco art products. I want to cover this really, really good with this Glamour Dust to make sure I get all of my varnish covered. I don't want to leave any open areas. And then I'm going to flip it over, give it a little flick on the back. Ooh, look at that. So pretty. I love it love my blingy blingy bling okay so I'm gonna go do the rest of these until I get to this one this one might be a little bit more difficult I have to be extremely careful when I pick it up that I don't um, 
get into that, but uh, I'm going to go off camera and finish the others because they're, you know, they'll take a little time to do each one, and I don't want to waste all the camera space with that. So um, I'll come back when I get them done. Okay, all my points are glittered. They're not dry, but look at that. I love how because we have uh, the different colors on our points, you know how we kept it dark down here and lighter as we went up, how it makes the, the points look uh, different colors. I love that. I think it turned out beautiful. Now, if you want to add a little bit of bling in here, um, you can. And I need to go in and shade around the inside of this with a dark color. I think, especially at the bottom, give it some weight. But I'm going to wait till it dries. It is not completely dry. Uh, I want to give you a tip about cleaning up your glitter. So if you've got a tray like this, I keep a dry brush that I use specifically for my glitter. And I just scoot it down to the end and then open the little button at the end and dump it into my dump it into my there's a button there it's just got a plug in it and dump it into my jar but if you're doing it on a paper plate now you'll want to do paper not uh, a foam plate you'll want to get a piece of your um, tracing paper and just make a funnel out of it. A smaller piece than this would be better. So just make a funnel that you can stick down into the jar and then dump your um, glitter down that funnel into your jar. Okay, and then for any glitter that you've got on your table, uh, just take a Swiffer sheet, and you can also do it to fine clean your, your tray here so you're not washing it down your sink. So just take a Swiffer, and it will get the glitter that is on your, your table. So uh, that's one way to do that. So I am going to spatter, I think, on here um, a little bit of glamour dust. You could take some varnish and spatter it and then sprinkle the glitter which since I'm using glitter I might as well show you how to do it that way so I'm gonna get some fresh varnish out here and open my glitter bottle back up I don't have a whole lot of glitter left in here I need to refill it but it should be enough to get this job job done so I'm gonna take my my uh, varnish and get brush here Sure it's going to spatter and I'm just going to spatter it all over the middle here and then I'm going to take my glitter real quickly and sprinkle that on there so it will stick to that varnish hopefully and then come over here to my tray or my plate whatever I'm using and you want to do this after the outside edges are dry Turn it over, tap it off, and tap it a little bit more than that, and that's a lot of glitter on there. And then we've got some glitter in the center here. I still need to come around and shade. I'm going to wait till it completely dries, and then I'm going to take my soft brush and I will brush off any loose because I know I didn't put that much varnish on there, although that looks really nice. I didn't put that much varnish on there, so I'm going to want to sweep off anything that is not dry. Now, this part that I just did in the center, because we varnished out here, you'll want to do this part after you varnish your piece. Okay? So, you'll want to, you can do it one of two ways. Go ahead and get your shading done down here, which I'm going to apparently do after. And then varnish the center and let it dry completely. Then spatter it with some varnish and glitter it. And then you can go out here and do these. Or you can do these and let them dry completely, varnish the center, let it dry completely, and then spatter it with some varnish and put some glitter on it. Your choice. Or you can just use the Glamour Dust. So those are your options there. And I'm going to get this completely dry, um, get my loose glitter off, and then come back and shade the bot just the bottom down here. I just want a, a little bit of a little bit more darkness or weight down here. Now you don't have to if you you love it just the way it is, then then leave it that way. If you got yours dark enough down here, you probably won't even need to shade. But I um, I feel like that could be just a little bit darker. I don't know. When it all gets completely dry, I could 
completely change my mind, but um, I will probably shade it with the Wedgwood Blue because it's my darkest color. If it's not quite dark enough, if I've gotten mine really dark, if you've gotten yours really dark and you still want to shade, then um, add a tiny, tiny little dot of black in there. Um, or some or some of the leaf green. Anything that's a, a color that will make that blue a little bit darker. So, okay, I'm going to leave it at that for now. I'm going to let this completely dry and come back and see if there's any tweaking that we need to do to it. But I think that turned out so beautiful. I love all that sparkle on there. Oh my gosh, I just love all that sparkle. I love the glitzy stuff. So, okay, I'm going to get it dry and then I'll be back. <laughs> 